Everyone, hi. Bruce Muffs and LCSW coming at you with another video from Ridge of Nevada. Tonight's live stream is going to be accountability and self-esteem. I like those two topics because I find that the two of them really kind of come together in a lot of different ways. I'll break both of them in my lecture tonight when I talk to you guys. Now, before I begin, next week, Wednesday, 5.30, it's the 31st, March 31st, 5.30 p.m. That is going to be West Coast time. We are doing a live training on fathers. Essentially, how to be a better father, what to be aware of when you want to become a father, what if you're not such a great father. It's going to encompass a lot of different points, but it's going to be next Wednesday night, 3.31, the end of the month, at 5.30 p.m. West Coast time. The cost will be $10 via PayPal, and you can, uh, you'll see the website. You know you know where we go to. You guys have done this before. Just sign up, and we're looking forward to you being involved. It will have homework questions. There will be movies to watch, books to read, and a lot of different breakdowns. And it gives you a chance to ask me questions on the topic of fatherhood. And if any other topic interests you, Bring it up, shoot it out. We want to hear from you. So again, next week, 8, 5 p.m., first, the end of March, West Coast time, $10 via PayPal to listen to a training on fatherhood and fathers. And again, looking forward to having your presence there. And the more interactive you are, the more we enjoy it. Also, I felt that this was a good topic, the accountability and the idea of self-esteem was a good segue is that you really got to start working on that if you're ultimately going to be a father. So without further ado, here we go. As always, fire in the questions, fire in the comments. We look forward to hearing from you. Okay, when it comes to understanding yourself, okay, and who you are and who you want to be, the ultimate truth, all right, can, oh, we got one right off the bat. Great to be able to hear you tune in, uh, all love. Uh, hey, thank you so much. Very nice of you to say that. Okay. When you're talking about, and I'm going to start off first with the accountability factor and things to be aware of with, with accountability. When you're looking for like the ultimate truth of who and who you want to be, can only be found with when, within your own self. That's a given. You can't look for applause or acclaim from others. It has to come from you. And it takes an enormous amount of effort and searching to find it. It's not easy to really dig deep and find out who you are. I'll be honest, it took me years, decades, to figure out who Bruce finally was and to get the confidence and understand how to go forward and why I needed to have accountability in my life if I was ever going to be any kind of success. You're going to find falseness and, and, and fakes and just – haters, wherever you're going to go, that's easy. And we also live today in an era where society is shaped by the opinions of others. Today, it's like you go online, that's how you define yourself. So many sites are about, are you good looking? Are you handsome? Are you successful? And definitions of what other people believe to be a success, and then everyone just kind of follows along with that. That's weak, okay? Because whenever you start doing that, whenever you start chasing other people's expectations of you, you're lost. You got to learn to like yourself. One of the main questions we get all the time with all these questions that we get in the comments is about liking myself, feeling good about myself, enjoying myself. That only happens when you do it from within. If you got to chase other people's opinion of you, you're going to be like a weather vane on top of a barn. They'll be constantly twisting and turning. You never have a right direction. Okay. Here's the point, though. A lot of times people say things like, well, I got to be perfect. I got to be perfect. I got to be perfect. No, 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 no. You have to accept imperfections in your life as part of society. That's it, of living life and in society. You're going to make mistakes. But when you have accountability, you have self-esteem, it goes good like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It just works. You know, hand it just clicks. It just works because you start putting those two together. You start to feel good about yourself with the self-confidence and you start to take yourself seriously and others around you pick up on that as well. Everyone knows, 
okay, that to succeed in business, you must keep on top of industry trends and innovations. That's, I don't care what business it is. You, you got to be on top of things. You always have to be on the hunt for new ideas, new markets, new concepts, new ideas, new perspectives. This is how this channel came about was because my agent slash producer said, hey, Bruce, I think we can do something different, do something better. This is how it all came about from a conversation of trying something different. We had a lot of leads, a lot of false steps along the way where we had something going. Turns out people weren't ready to go deep. They weren't ready to go hard. They weren't ready to go into the black. It was like too intimidating. But we persevered, kept on going, kept on going, kept on going to where we are now. That's it. In life, you must keep up the latest techniques in wisdom. Yeah. You hear such nonsense and such stupidity throughout your life and throughout your day. You're always looking for some like what they call pearls of wisdom. You have to. I don't care what aspect of your life it is. You constantly have to grow. If I think of how much of my conversation is really stupidity in the course of my day, my week, my month, my year, my life, way more than what I got in terms of anything helpful. And I think most people would say that, that you got more stupidity than you got common sense. So what's the point? You, 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 you go to seminars, you read books, you take supplemental courses. Just for myself alone, I have a list on a zip drive where I used to keep it on a piece of paper, but of course, you know, everything is computers. I have it on a zip drive, all the books one day I want to read. And then now several hundred of them. Occasionally, I have time to get a book and I'll see it in a bookstore or in a discount rack at Goodwill or at the library and I'll get it. But for the most part, the list is now probably several hundred books from all walks of life. I also have a list on there of movies I one day would like to watch. And that list is also several hundred movies because I'm interested in new things. I saw something recently on the internet about 11 things you didn't know about Brooklyn, where I'm from. And the five boroughs make, that make up New York City. And there were things there about Brooklyn that here I grew up in Brooklyn. I lived most of my life in Brooklyn. I didn't even know those even existed. I had to go back to Brooklyn, besides seeing certain people I want to visit from this channel, I'm going to make an attempt to catch some of those things I never knew about. Exposing myself, opening myself up. Can't stress that enough. Okay. All of that will keep you growing and will keep you from being ignorant and apathetic. Consistently pursue pursue wisdom. Not everyone's going to talk it, but when you find someone that speaks the truth, listen to them. I got to give credit. You know, I, I know he hates compliments. I got to give credit to my Asian slash producer slash bottle washer that does everything and that I'm in awe of his willingness to try new things you know, take on different roles, different different hats of like, I can do this, Bruce, or I can figure this out, Bruce, or I'll do this, Bruce, or Bruce, take a look at this. He looked over what I'm going to be talking about next week for fathers. I got to say, I'm in awe, oh, you know, not not even to like, you know, you know, wow, you're amazing, you know, fake compliment kind of thing. But in truth, man's, man is a talented, talented man, and I am lucky to have this person. I really am. I mean, it takes something that I wrote and shape it like a piece of clay into like a, a, a fine sculpture. Where do you find that? The answer is, you know, that's reality. So you got to constantly look to find people that can better your lives, give you solid advice, not creepy, weirdo, nut jobs, and look out for you. So what's the next thing? Shocking. Here we go again. Find yourself a mentor for wisdom. Ah, oh, shocking. Choose someone who is humble, wise, and willing to share his personal formula for success. The word is humble. Humble. That's what makes me successful in counseling, is that I always put myself in the other person's shoes or through their eyes. People say, how do you relate to people? How do you relate to this walk of life, that walk of life, that person, that person? Because I put myself through their situation. I'm humble, okay? And I'm willing to share. You know why? That's what this channel is all about. That's why I want you to do the next week. 
I've made so many mistakes in my life that I hit the wall 80 miles an hour over and over again, crash and burn. I want you guys to hit it at 30 miles an hour. So you walk away from the wreck. 80, you're not going to. 30, you will. It's my experience as a therapist seeing thousands of people. And by the way, we still get comments, the rapist. <laughs> Let me clarify this for our listening audience. I'm not a rapist. <laughs> I'm not a rapist. When we made the channel, we were trying to decide what to call myself. And we didn't like the clinician. We didn't like social worker. Even though I am a licensed clinical social worker, that's where the LCSW comes from. So we thought therapist. I never thought someone would make that analogy, the rapist. But I've had it about a dozen times. So no rapist. But... <laughs> My point is my ability to relate is based on understanding what I've been through, what I've experienced, the years I've put in, what I've learned from it. That's what these trainings are about is to give you my experience. And maybe we get emails, emails now, we get text messages from people 15, 18, 20 years old, like say, hey, Bruce, hey, Bruce, hey, Bruce, help me figure myself out. Help me go forward. That's what the trainings are about, to give you that knowledge base so you can go forward you know, reread them, rewatch them, use the homework, read the book, see the movie to learn something about yourself so that you can be successful. Okay. I see we're getting a ton of questions. Hang on one second. Uh, so that is to share. All right. Last thing I want to say before I get to all the comments, we are responsible for each of our actions and behaviors during the year and during our lifetime. And we sign our name on the bottom of those pages that record each of our activities in life with one word, accountability. Your actions will define you not just after you live and after you die. It's what kind of person you turn out to be. It's accountability. Answer the questions right now. Uh, I do that too. Thank you, Johnny Boy. Hey, I reach my own pain to relate to their pain. Good, good. Um, Red, hey, Red, thank you. Another one, thank you. Um, psychotherapist, psychotherapist. Um, we're going to stick away from that one. Um, how do you feel about overconfidence such as Kanye West? Okay, it's a good question. Um, Kanye West, it, it's not necessarily overconfidence. He struggles with mental illness. Uh, he's been diagnosed with bipolar. And you know, again, I'm not as treating therapist, so I don't want to overgeneralize, but unfortunately with bipolar, when you're in a manic state where you're not feeling right, you're not taking your medication, sometimes you start saying grandiose things that are not really realistic. So you got to kind of filter through. It's like, it's like pouring spaghetti into a pot, like a strainer, and you want to get rid of the water. You got to let that stuff filter through, and then you get to what's left, the spaghetti, hopefully, not the water. Kanye struggles. I, I have a lot of empathy for him a lot of empathy for his wife, what they're going through. I don't know if they're getting divorced, whatever, but it's not an easy path. So often, sometimes people will say things like over, like you think it's overconfidence, realize that they're suffering from mental illness, or if there's a certain pathological need to constantly boast when it's not, you don't have to do that. I've, I've been around a lot of people that do that, that say things that are just not realistic. Why do you even say it in the first place? But they do that because of their own internal issues. So, as one of my holy rabbis, Michael Jordan, once said, if you can do it, it ain't boasting. Um, but learn, you know, who's saying it and why they're saying it and kind of go from there. Okay. What if someone thinks themselves uh, like godlike? Is it misplaced confidence? Okay. I'm going to go back. Good question. Go back to what I always like to call is your spidey sense. If something doesn't sound right, you kind of know that. I say with therapy, it's you got to be really careful who you get, who you're talking to, because sometimes they'll say things that are not always so accurate, just in general. Uh, teachers, clergy, your parents, your best friends. When they start giving, like, they start doing that third person, well, what, what Bruce thinks, uh, I'm not a God, you know, that third person stuff. I, I don't buy that. Where if you give me all your money, where you need to address me now as Mr. or Sir when you call my name, not healthy. You know, you can't look at me where you're beneath me, where I'm smarter than you. Not good. F 
figure out how the is the person humble, like I said before, humble, wise, and willing to share. If you don't get those three things going on, that triple crown, you got a problem there. Humble, wise, willing to share. I can't tell you how to make money. I can't show you my recipe to make great brownies. Now, there's something wrong there. When they start putting themselves on a pedestal, be careful. Hope that gives you an answer. Um, yeah, hope that gives you an answer, Johnny boy. Um, so that's what I want to talk about now with accountability. Accountability in speech, in deeds, and in action regarding financial income and expenses and in all other matters of human interaction and relationships. That's it. That's the accountability. Everything that you say and do has impact. Your words have meanings. Your actions have meanings. We shoot this thing at 5.30 Thursday night. Okay. It's my job to be here on time. And if I'm late, it's not my producer's fault. It's my fault. But I also think to myself, too, this person is doing this for me, and I'm so grateful. Why would I jeopardize that by being, you know, jerky? How dare you? You know who I am? It wasn't my fault. Yeah, it is your fault. You're not here on time. Are you prepared? You had your stuff ready? Oh, I left it at work. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Well, you know what? That's, those are, I, I'm sick of apologies. Either you do or you don't. That's the accountability of it. That's why I like sports so much because the end of the game, end of the, the, the first half, second half, fourth quarter, third period, you know who won the game. There's no more confusion, the boxing match. Someone wins, someone loses. So what do you bring to the table? Accountability. That's it. That's all that matters. I want to go back over that again. Oh, I see things showing up here. Accountability in your speech, in deeds, and action regarding money, financial stuff, and expenses, and in all other matters. Speech, deeds, and action. I'll be there on time. I'll pick you up. I'll have the report ready. Here's the check. Sorry for keeping you waiting. I'm letting you know what's going. Let me text you to show you respect. We have to reschedule. What time? What do you need for the menu? I'll stop and pick things off. Right now, today, man, I wasn't feeling so great when I woke up. I didn't even think for one second not to be here. Unless I'm going to be in the hospital, I'm showing up. That's it. And I was coming over today, unexpected traffic. But whose problem is that? Mine, right? I just speak once or twice, get around some slower drives, which I rarely, rarely do. Got to save 15 seconds here, 15 seconds here. Show up on time, walk in. What do you need me to do? We don't have a lot of makeup people, obviously. You know, we don't have that kind of stuff. But are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready mentally? I'm ready. Turn the camera on. I have to be accountable, not just to my Asian slash producer, not just to you guys, the fans, but to myself. Am I accountable? When I go to work, yeah, there are times I'm ripped. There are times I'm tired. I'm not going to lie. You know what? If you're feeling that bad, go get a cup of coffee. Maybe go get like a Powerade or a vitamin water. And then you got to hump. Then you got to do work. You got to call people. You got to talk to people. I have a busy job. I'm not going to get into what I do. It's involving mental health and social work. But I have responsibilities. I got to be here. Got to be there. I'm figuring out my schedule in my head. Am I accountable to my boss and to my company? That's it. If I was given assignments, which I've had hundreds of times in my career, Bruce, can you go here? Can you be here? What time can you be there? Well, if I said I'll be there at 6 o'clock, that didn't mean 6.12. That didn't mean 6.06. That meant 5 to 6, 10 to 6. Hey, worst comes to worst. The person's you know, not there, didn't show up. But did I show up? Was I there? That's it. Got a lot of comments coming. Let me get to them. Um, Sloan, Sloan Dog, knowing that accountability can save an individual, how do you get a person to be more accountable other than telling them straight because it often doesn't work? So what does that tell you? That's not a person to work with. Straight up. Then you got to move on. You told a person what's, what needs to be done and they're not going to do it. Move on. Find the person that will be on time and will be accountable. Um, eating healthy alkaline foods, yep, exercising, 
earth and spending time in it. Yeah, with this reading, deleting social media, and spending less time on social media, spending time with loved ones. Yeah, they're all good. They're all good. Yeah. But it comes down to all of these things are nice. And I'll talk about that when I get to self-esteem, um, Satori. But here's the point. It all comes down to accountability. So here, uh, am I exercising? Okay, I exercise for an hour. I need to shower. It's an hour and a half. I'm going to work on time. Okay. If I go exercise, uh, is my paperwork done for the day? See all my clients that I get what I needed to do, get done. Okay. Um, you know, reading, uh, getting rid of social media, spending less time, you know, good. Spend time with my kids. Okay, do I have to do I have to get paperwork to my agent? You see, all this thing comes down to do all these things, they're all good, but you gotta be accountable to everyone around you. That's all. Question for Miguel is a psych ward and a mental hospital the same? Um, yes and no. A mental hospital is a, is a standalone hospital, it's only gonna treat the mentally ill. A psych ward where psychiatric ward ward, sorry, it's my Brooklyn coming out could easily be a unit within a hospital that has like 300 beds. So a psych ward could be part of pediatrics, could be part of geriatrics, could be part of adolescence, could be part of uh, gastric bypass surgery. So when you say psych ward, psychiatric ward, it's usually going to be then a unit within a, a large hospital. And a mental hospital is a standalone free unit we're just only going to have people who are suffering from various types of mental illness. Okay. Uh, I've been told my whole life that I can't use my BPD and ADHD as a crutch. I need to take responsibility. When do we draw the line between taking responsibility, understanding mental illness? Great question. Great question. You have to look at it this way. If you have bipolar if you have ADHD, if you have PTSD, if you have depression, you have to accept that. You have to accept your mental illness. If you need to be taking medication, take your meds. If you need to be in therapy, do therapy. If you need to go to a certain time, have the schedule you need. But at the same time, you, then you have to figure out how can I be successful at work in my interaction with others. Nothing wrong with being mentally ill but accepting it, and then what do I have to do to be able to fit in and get what I need to do to get done? If that means waking up half an hour early to get my clothes ready, if that means making my lunch the night before, if that means having my paperwork lined up and having a, a chart, I'm having a rough afternoon, so what other work can I do? Figure out what you can do to be adaptable and show you have accountability even with mental illness. Not a crime, but do what you got to do to be successful with it. Um, John, how do you control your emotions and not let it control you? Because we're emotional beings. Perfect answer. Great question. I don't personalize. 99% of the time, when people get get angry at me, it's not angry at me, they're angry at the situation or something bigger than that. But if I'm accountable, right, if I do what I'm supposed to do, it's hard to get angry at the person. Yeah, we're emotional beings, but being control yourself as much as possible. I got a boss. Everyone has a boss. My, I have to please my boss, not the other way around. And people get confused about that. If I had a coach, what does coach want? To make coach happy. Because if coach is happy, I'm going to get playing time. So what do I want? And then, okay, and then to get playing time, am I working out? Am I taking a thousand jump shots? Am I lifting weights for two hours? I'm not just doing that. What am I doing to show I'm accountable for my time to get better to make the coach happy? My boss wants something from me? Let her know. Let him know. That's how you do it. Um, I have a very hard time understanding socially what goes on around me. Is that a sign of autism? It's at a point I don't talk to any of my coworkers because I just don't understand. Hey, great comment. Here's my first thing to say to you. Get yourself evaluated. Okay, let us know. I'm curious to know how old you are, first of all. Um, but let me know how old you are. I can, answer, I can answer that question a little bit better. But definitely get yourself assessed and see, write down what issues are you having with social awareness and social skills so the person evaluating you doesn't have to kind of guess 
you show it to them and let them understand what you're dealing with and kind of go from there. It could be other issues too. It could be, I don't want to get into it. Like it could be like uh, brain issues. I don't want to, I don't want to like be alarmist, but just get evaluated, write down what's going on so the person can read it and then go from there. Let me know your age though. And also let us know again, follow up with us if this helped you to go forward. Okay. Um, Hey, Doc, yeah, I need to learn how to love myself. Very simple. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Like who you are. I Listen, I'll be honest. I thought I was going to be a professional basketball player. I love basketball. I was crazy for basketball. I wear out baskets. I go to the park. Here's the problem. I stopped growing at 5'10". And I have small hands. And I have thick glasses. And I couldn't really jump that high. You know, I wish I would have been 6'5". I wish I would have had hands like garbage cans, you know, like like a, a baseball glove. Didn't happen. I, I did the best I could, had to move on. Don't compare yourself to others. Compare yourself to yourself. And all that stuff will go away. Um, I'm 25. Got it. I'm looking at all my issues now. I'm currently trying to get medical insurance. Yeah, 25 years old, go get yourself Obamacare. should not be a problem. Contact your uh, hospitals. Contact your local health department, mental health department. You should get signed up pretty easily. But go get health insurance and go get yourself evaluated. Good luck. So you're at the age where you need to take this kind of stuff seriously. Good luck. Let us know how it goes. Um, should we observe ourselves better, what triggers certain emotions, and not react to it but try to understand it? And where it originates from. Yeah, perfect. That's I listened to a lecture last night. Person was talking about something, and I was like, well, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I was sexually abused in, when I was you know middle school. There you go. All of his issues, a lot of it stem from that abuse that he suffered sexually. But I was waiting. Why? 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 Why is he doing this? Then it hit. His functional childhood, and he was molested. So when you go back to why you are the way you are, you're able to kind of, like I always talk about going down to the foundation. You can't do it on the second floor. You got to go down into that basement, pick up a couple of floorboards and see where those pipes are going. You got to go internally and you got to go dig deep and see where it all started from. Most issues in my experience stem from childhood. So figure out which ones are painful to you, get help with them and move forward. Okay. Um, it did thank I always watch your videos at work. At least I have my music keep me occupied and it helps me to get uh to not get super anxious. Perfect. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I, I listen, I do a ton of writing. I listen to a lot of music. A lot of the videos that you guys see me break down when we get the request where my agent says, Hey, do this guy. I'll 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 rewind it and I'll listen to it like 15 times at work. I thank God I have a private office and I'll just listen to it like 10, 15 times with the music kind of sink in. And as I'm doing my work, nothing wrong with that. Whatever works to keep you occupied and keep you from getting like hyper, do it. Um, if you get admitted to a mental hospital, how long will they keep you there? Uh, no, Matt, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Miguel, you answered to your question. It That all depends so much. Depends on your insurance. I'm not going to lie to you. Depends on what your situation is. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, depends what brought you in there. What was your, what was the reason why you were brought in there? Most of the time you're going to stay in hospitals only a couple of days today. Uh, once the eval, once you're in a, a psych ward or, a, or a mental health hospital, it's not going to be long, usually just a couple of days. Um, unless it's really, really severe, they're not going to hold on to you. If you're an adolescent, you might go what they call a re, um, RTC residential treatment center. You can be there for a couple of months for that. But unless you're an adolescent with some deep, deep issues and you're a young adult, only a couple of days. Hope that answers that question for you. I will thank you. Yes, let us know how it goes. Um, we're curious to know. Shoot us an email and we'll get back to and respond back to you. No problem. Okay. So the basis of all responsible human behavior, responsible Human behavior is accountability. That's it. You know, you want to boil it down to its essence. That's the whole story. 
is accountability. Are you accountable to those around you? Are you accountable to yourself? Okay. Um, I will say, okay. Hey, and thank you for the upgrade, guys, but I'm only, I am only only have a master's. So I'm a licensed clinical social worker, not a doctor, but always thank you for the upgrade. Uh, how do I deal with self-loathing? Really simple. Put down on a piece of paper, what are your skills? Put down on the piece of paper your accomplishments. We'll write it on your, on your uh, you know, video, on your computer. Your skills, write down your accomplishments. You'll realize you're not the loser you think you are. And also, do this also. Practice what's called self-compassion. You dropped the fly ball. We lost the game. You suck. What are you playing baseball for? You're terrible. You missed the free throw. We lost by one. We could have won to tie the game. We would have won in overtime. Oh, my God, I suck. I suck. I suck. I suck. Take the basketball, kick it against the wall, act like an idiot in the locker room, get kicked off the team. Practice some self-compassion. Hey, I've been through a lot. Did the best I could. I look better at this next time. I have an idea about this. Okay, self-compassion. Don't beat yourself up because studies have shown people that do that are less successful than when you give yourself a pat in the back and say you'll get them next time. That's what I'm talking about with there. Um, let me just clarify something also. Michael Jordan, when he was like a second-year player, and people begin to realize how great he was, he played my Knicks at Madison Square Garden on Christmas Day. And he got the ball in the corner. They were down by two. And he took a three-point shot from the corner with two Knicks basically jumping at him, leaping at him. And the shot hit the rim, bounced out. They lost the game. After the game was over, he was, of course, surrounded by reporters. And the reporter said, Michael, how did you feel about that shot? I mean, your you, 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 you shot missed. I was so impressed with this guy. He said, hey, I took that shot. I thought it was going to go in. I'll take that same shot 100 times and I'll hit it 99 in a row. But you know what? Didn't work out. We lost. Everybody, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa. We got Detroit on Tuesday. I got to go. Done. Self-confidence, accountability wrapped in one sandwich. Perfect. I want the ball. I want to shoot it. And if it misses, oh, well. Because if I hit every single shot I ever make in my career, there'll be a lot of questions about what kind of person I'm like, I'm some kind of robot. That's it. That's you got to look at your life. Take the chances. Be accountable and move forward. You didn't run and hide in the locker room. He spoke to, he spoke to Jim Gray. That's it. I, the board's really ripping up. Uh, I want, uh, never knew why. I just was wondering. Okay, good. Glad to hear that. I was wondering at one point in my life, I was at my most confident, social, rational, but still a little emotional. But then something happened. It came isolated and pushed everyone away. Why uh, suddenly I feel sudden urge of confidence? Okay, go back, reflect. Why did that happen? What did that do to you? And how do I move on from that situation? And counseling would help. Talking to a good friend would help. And a mentor would help. Break it down, break down the pieces, figure it out, put it back together, and go forward. Okay, uh, I'm not saying I got admitted. I, I, yeah, no problem. Yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna check. Um, so just to feel sudden urges of confidence and other emotions, right? Break down what happened. Why, why did you do it? I, I will do that myself mentally when I do something stupid. Why did I do something stupid? Why did I get angry? Why did I let someone get under my, my skin? Why? And I start to reflect, and then I calm down. Self-reflection. Humble yourself. When you humble yourself, watch what happens. Um, I just want to say thank you. Even though for most of your videos on mental illness don't apply to me, I do find them great. So I just want to say keep up the good work. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it. Uh, any tips on being an outcast and not fitting in and having zero friends? Sure. Okay, right now, go ahead, write down what are things that you like to do. Then look online, because now the country's slowly reopening. Why don't other people have the feelings the same way that you do? Go out there and introduce yourself.
Be open, be open. Self-confidence is being open to new things. There are people out there, I guarantee you, that like what you do. Go find the group of them that does and get going. Let us know how that works. Um, Serge, thank you. Uh, boy, hey, Bruce, how's the stream been? The, hey, Triggered Honda Boy. Yes, all good, all good, all good. Thank you for seeing your name up there. We always enjoy hearing from you. Much appreciation. Uh, tips on loneliness. I have no friends. I live alone. I'm constantly isolated. I don't want to be alone, but I am. Okay. Um, what you need to start doing then, if you're alone, and it goes back again, we're not meant to be alone. We are not a island. Man is not an island. That old song of Simon and Garfunkel, I'm a rock, you know, doesn't work. Start to find people. Expose yourself. Do volunteer work. I always say that. That's a huge way to get a better job, make connections, get someone to recognize you. Volunteer at a food bank. You start to meet people. Volunteer at a place that can use your talents, maybe some carpentry. Donate platelets. Donate that people are always desperate for that. You'd be surprised who you start to meet when you volunteer. Go to a rescue shelter for dogs and cats. Help clean up the cages. Play with the pets. You'll feel better about yourself doing that, and you'll meet new people. Do those kinds of things. Do a cleanup on along the riverbank. You meet new people. Always put yourself out there to meet new people. I try and meet at least five new people a week to just grow my social network. Okay. Um, how do I stop seeking? I hope that helps you, Red. Um, Miguel, how do I stop seeking validation? When you realize it's just puffery, it's just smoke. When you got confidence in yourself, self-confidence, you know you're the best. I have total confidence in my ability to bring out a great training to give you guys intrinsic value for $10. I have total confidence. I could go before if my agent said, I got you this weekend. Well, not this weekend, it's Passover. But if you get me next weekend, he says, I got 50,000 people for you to talk to for three straight nights at some family function advocacy group in Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm like, I'm ready. No problem. I guess I got to take the time off. I got, I know what I got to say. Boom, ready to rock. Yeah, boom. 50,000 people, three nights in a row. Absolutely. Total confidence in myself. I'm accountable. I'm going to come ready to rock and roll, and I'm ready to talk to 50,000 people. You mean to do a mic? Great. If not, I'll walk around the audience. I don't care. An arena doesn't even phase me. Six hours up there for, yeah, I'll get some water. It's all I really need. I'm not a high-demanding guy. And I'm ready to pump it out. Um, so I hope it makes sense to you, Miguel. Don't you don't need other people to tell you you're good. If you Michael Jordan said it's so good. If you can do it, it ain't boasting. That's it. I'm the best out there, he would say. I am the best. I want the ball. That's it. There was a there was a uh, jockey named Willie Shoemaker, and he he, he had like seven thousand wins. And he had a great line. He goes, I want the post. I mean, I will I will go to the post, meaning I'll take the inside circle. And if I get that post, that horse is going to be in the money. I will bring that horse in the money. Well, 7,000 wins, Hall of Famer, I guess there was some truth to that. Any great athlete has strong mental capacities. Any great businessman, you, if you don't have that, then don't do it. It's not for you. But you want to get it. You got to believe you are the best. I am the best when it comes to mental health. End all, be all. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. So, hey, Johnny. Okay. Say, Sam, I can't connect with people. I'm really surface levels. So called friendships. It's hard to make a deep, meaningful relation with people. Every time they come close, I just push, push, push. Okay, the question is, in counseling, why do you have to do that? Why can't you be happy with yourself? And if people like you, let them in. You're overthinking it, and the question is why. That's why you need to get someone to talk to about this and figure out why you push when you should be embracing at your age. That's it. Figure out why. Don't push. It's time for you to embrace. I guarantee I'm 57. I'll be 58 soon. Got a lot more under the stream. I got more reason to push people away. You guys generally are very young on this channel. Don't push. Embrace. Okay. 
uh, Satori, good book to read is an instinct the devil, but Nap I know, yeah, Napoleon Hill. Uh, seven basic fears, fear of poverty, fear of criticism, fear of ill health, fear of loss of love. Yeah, uh, fear of old age. You know what my number one is in that one, looking at Satori? Fear of poverty. I grew up poor. Everything I do is about, you know, ultimately making money, not any more really for myself, but for my family, and I can pay my bills. But yeah, fear of poverty, number one. That's how I grew up, very, very poor. Uh, no, Mike, another thing I do to gain confidence, talking to people and not have awareness. Yeah. Um, to gain, just talk to people. Just talk to people, talk to people. Johnny Boy, okay. Um, I know I'm greater than what I am. I'm an amazing free spirit inside, but limited insecurities. Try, okay. Holds me back from exposing my true self. Get that trauma resolved. I cannot say this enough to everyone listening. If you have past trauma, get it resolved. Deal with it. Don't let it continue to eat up like an 800-pound gorilla on your back or like having a cancer in your system. Get it resolved. Most of the time, you had nothing to do. You couldn't have stopped it. You couldn't have let, not let it happen. I want you to get away from that. Don't let the trauma ruin your life. You've been sexually abused, physically, verbally. Men, you've seen horrible things. Get it resolved. I'm not going to go away, but you'll hold it at bay. That's the point about trauma. Put it in perspective. That's it. Um, is anyone inherently narcissistic? No, Malcolm. That's And that's an overused kind of way of looking at things because people say, oh, he's narcissistic. No, there's a difference between confidence and accountability and narcissism. Narcissism, when you truly believe you're the flower in the fall and everything bow down to you. I've been around narcissistic people. When you're humble and when you have accountability, you get away from that. Hope that helps. Okay, uh, Nomad, that was a powerful question. I noticed I don't have connections with anyone as well. Difficult for me and even my parents. I never felt anything with them. I'm sure that's because I that's because I was alone. Okay. So it's time for you to spread your wings, get out of that nest. If your parents are so much sheltered, they didn't push you, then it's up to you to do that. Yeah, I, yeah. I blame my parents for a lot of things. But once I stopped doing that, I realized it was on me. Yeah, I had a rough childhood. It wasn't great. No, it wasn't. But at a certain point, I can't keep on saying it. I'm going I'm to be 60 in two years. You know, my childhood, man, if I would have had a better childhood, I would have turned out better. Dude, you're ready to retire. You're ready to go to the nursing home. You're still going to talk like that? Like, how silly is that going to sound after a while? Two years of uh, jello tonight? You know, if I would have had a better childhood, I would have had a grape in my jello. Man, oh, man, what are you talking about? You're ready to, you know, see your maker. You can't think like that. Yeah, something that pops in, what happened in childhood, I let it go. Got to move on. I got to be realistic. I got to create my own destiny. Life is unfair. Life can suck. Life can be brutal. I've been there in all of those. You got to move forward. Okay. Um, how do I stop being insecure? Just here's what you got to do, Mike. Really simple. You got to say to yourself, um, what am I good at? I don't want to compare myself to anybody else anymore. I'm just happy being Mike. I don't need to be like anybody else. I got my own strengths. I got my own skills that make me unique. Take that uniqueness and go forward with it. Um, does medical cover psychologists? Yes, it should. Uh, no, 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 let me back up. You'll, you, you may have a different number for mental health in the back of your insurance card. So see if there's a separate number for mental health services. But yes, medical should cover... Um, mental health services, but it may not be the same number. They may say check, uh, press on number four, but just see on the back of the card if mental health is separate. Okay. Um, do you think music can help people understand mental illness, even if they haven't dealt with it? There's just projects like Everywhere at the End of Time, Dealing with Dementia. Uh, Nick, absolutely. That's what we do. I mean, we, we pick music. Well, my, my agent picked music. There's a way to reach people, and he was 100% correct. Huge. Music has shown to have huge stimulating abilities to help the brain cope, relax, process, internalize, help you focus. Music, 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 
Absolutely. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, dealing with dementia. Yes. Even with dementia, it's shown to be helpful. You know, and you, when I say music, you could even do things like dogs barking. You know, let the person remember their, their animal barking. Or a cat meowing. Animals were rain sounds with the sound of the wind. Yeah. It gives people a chance to kind of like literally calm down. So, yes, even with dementia, music and certain types of music like cymbals, sound of rain, the ocean, if they like that in their past, see what they were interested in, maybe the sound of a baseball game. You don't know. But, yes, it does have power with dementia. Um, awesome response. I felt that great. Any tips to change my mind state? Thank you. Okay. Again. Sit down and say to yourself, what are my skills? What are my strengths? What am I going to do differently this weekend? You know, I, I do the same thing every weekend. This weekend, I'm going to a park. This weekend, I'm going to donate platelets. This week, I'm going to join a charity drive. This week, I'm going to clean out my closet. This week, I'm going to make a goal to meet two new people. If I go walking, just to say hello to them. Something different. Don't get in that same rut. That is death. Okay. What do you think about Kanye's mental health? You know, I wish him the best. Bipolar is a tricky, tricky beast to deal with. Many people don't even understand it. Oh, you can kind of like snap it on. Snap. It's, I wish it was that simple. You know, he's a jerk. He's a loser. Why doesn't he take his medication? How can he put his family through that? If it was so easy... Okay, we wouldn't have that issue. I wish him the best. Just hope he gets help, hope he has the right people around him, and hope he can go forward. That's it. I feel bad for him. I'm not like, oh, I'm better than him, or look, he's so wealthy. Even people, forget about that, the old stupid saying, like, oh, rich people, you know, everyone suffers. Mental illness does not discriminate between white, black, brown, yellow, even aliens, zombies, they all get mental illness. You know, it doesn't matter what your skin color is, where you live. It affects people. And bipolar is a tricky, tricky disorder to control. It's not easy. Give him a lot of credit. Um, let's see. Uh, what, do you think about, what do you think about incels? Oh, I'm aware of that. Uh, yes, 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 I am. Um, be very careful with that stuff. You know, um, when you get into a mindset of anger, never effective. You, know, you don't want to get into that like, I'm angry, I'm angry, I'm angry. Why am I angry about the situation? Process it, talk it over with somebody, and just get different perspectives to work with. And never get co-opted into a situation where everything is only about anger, hate, frustration, bitterness. Not a way you want to go. All right, I hope that helps. Um, is meditation and prayer the same thing? No, two different things. Meditation is about self-control, learning how to control your breathing, how to control your brain. Has a million studies on it, all very effective. Prayer is a leap of faith, but it gives you power when you believe there's a higher power. When you believe there's a higher power that someone is controlling what's going on here, even if man is imperfect, God or your version of God hopefully is not. And that's what you're basing it on. So different things hold out. Okay. Why does the brain go against you and battle you? I find the brain so interesting. I want to become a psychologist someday. It's fascinating. Absolutely. Um, we've now learned about maybe one-tenth of one percent of the brain after the last 15, 20 years of really starting to develop it. I mean, develop I mean, study it. The more we learn, the more fascinating it becomes. The brain, that's how I tell people, don't do anything self-destructive to your coconut. No drugs, no alcohol, moderation. Put the right thing into your mouth. What you do to your brain has huge impacts on the rest of your life. Um, and Okay, intended reserve. Some days uh, I'll be the best version of me I can be, and just the next day I'll be down and blue. Some days I do everything I want to, but right now I just feel like a log floating in the open sea. Okay, that's something to talk to somebody about. Why do you have the highs and lows? Nothing wrong with that. We all go through that. Talk to somebody, talk to a mentor, talk to a therapist, and see what's going on with you. Why do you have these highs and lows? Why are you not level out? It's understandable, but get it checked out. If you feel something's amiss,
get it checked out. The earlier, the better. Okay. Uh, imagine a zombie with a psychologist. Yeah, it'd be an interesting session. Um, but that anger sounds like me. Yeah, there you go. Um, Johnny Boy, no. What do you think about Sigmund Freud? Um, a lot of this stuff has been discredited over time. I mean, that's just ine inevitable. Um, a lot of stuff about the sexuality and about the dreams. But don't forget, the people that Sigmund Freud was treating back then in Vienna were upper middle class and wealthy and had the ability to do psychoanalyst analytic stuff for like days, four-hour sessions, half-day sessions, three-day sessions. And they, there was no insurance back then. You paid out of pocket. And he was able to kind of understand you by the dreams and hour after hour of asking you questions. So he got a diff, you know, a very different perspective. Mental health today is far, far, far more varied, but he broke down a lot of barriers and he got a lot of things resolved. Of course, you know, there's always an emphasis on the sexuality. I get it. Got to start somewhere. But he did open up a lot of portals. Put it to you that way. Okay. Um, my mother also dealt with bipolar disorder and considering how she had to deal with two kids or dealing with a, being a single mom, not easy. Wow. Mate, got respect to your mom. Hope Connie will do well taking care of four kids. Not easy. I mean, I give you a lot of credit to your mom, and I wish the best for Kanye. Being a, a stable parent, an accountable parent, a self-confident parent is not easy in the best of times. And when you have mental illness, it's even harder. Yeah, kudos to your mom. And Kanye, wherever you are, I wish you the best, brother. That's it. Um, I have a few friends, but I don't feel content with myself. Again, Miguel, the fact that you're kind of on this site tonight and asking question after question tells me you want to get better. You don't want to be the same, Miguel, you were a year ago. That's a good sign. So what I want you to start figuring out is, hey, Miguel, how are you going to make more friends? How are you going to make more contacts? What do you have to do to feel more self-confidence and have accountability with yourself? See, tonight's topic was a good one because – it really kind of goes hand in hand for next week's topic about fathers. Because if you don't have confidence in yourself and you're not accountable now as a single guy, or I'm sure some women are calling in tonight too, how are you going to be an effective adult? It goes hand in hand. Please get the training next week and please tune in. All right. Um, why do more men commit suicide than women? I think what society tells men, they can't show emotions and, and you know to man up and then they bubble it up. Um, here's the problem though. We're seeing more women commit suicide. They're getting comfortable with guns. Uh, that's a big factor. And it's becoming more quote, quote, socially acceptable to kill yourself because of all the TV shows, all the social media. So yeah, men still outnumber women, but it's, a, it's a, it's a, um, women are catching up, unfortunately. There are more, a lot more women wear, uh, not wear, have weapons at home. A lot more women are in the workforce. A lot more women are doing a lot more stress because the jobs that they have. So the numbers are kind of creeping up. Um, do guys, have guys been told a million times to suck it up, suck it up, suck it up? Absolutely. And I think we're slowly seeing, particularly in rap, there was actually an article in JAMA, which is a medical magazine about are people why you know that rappers are more much more open about sharing their mental health issues and that it's relating to young people and often people who don't get to have mental health act access like African Americans, Latinos, blah blah blah. I think it's great, but we're learning to finally say it's okay to open up. There was an old he's an old he's gone a long time. Name was John Wayne, he made like over hundred movies, and he definitely played a tough guy. And it was always like, be like John Wayne, be like John Wayne, be like John Wayne. Okay, we realize, of course, that's not the way to go anymore, and to share things is healthy. The Carolina Panthers hired an LCSW to work with the players and their families, and the Raiders hired a guy who was a former, well, let's say former Raider. He went through training camp, and he got cut, went back and got his master's degree. He's going to be, well, he is now, the Raiders' official LCSW therapist. So even – Football players are recognizing you can have depression, you can have PTSD, you can have had things done to you in childhood for trauma. People are kind of waking up to that. Okay. Um, what do you think about Carl Jung? And um, 
another guy who was one of the pathfinders in mental health. You know, did a lot of stuff of kind of understanding yourself. Jungian um, therapy was popular for decades. Not as popular as it used to be because things change. We learn more. We pick her up on things and we pick up on, on aspects of life we weren't aware of. But a really good job about breaking things down and, you know, analytical thinking and looking at yourself. So, you, you know, really going esoteric. So Jungian therapy, is, you know, it's is not dead. Um, not as popular as it used to be, but was it around for decades and people would subscribe to that? Absolutely. So you got to give these people credit for pioneering techniques and ideas that have changed how people look at themselves, um, hopefully in a positive way. So, yeah, credit to Carl Jung. Um, thank you for your videos. Hey, no problem. And, yeah, he ref and great answer, Josh K. Carl Jung refined Freud's ideas. He took it the next step. A lot of times you look master and you see the next person carrying you know, the load, carrying the ladder to go to the next level, to the next level. Absolutely. Both of them were brilliant, brilliant men and great with uh, analytic thinking. So, yes, he did refine a lot of Freud's ideas. Absolutely. Um, considering how you've talked a lot about PTSD, what's your favorite song album that deals with it? Um, Kid Cudi, uh, Man on the Moon series, uh, Capital C's, Eva Love. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, you, um, God, Mac Miller, man. Um, whew. I think of a million ones there. Um, a lot of his songs really kind of ripped you up how we kind of perceive things. Uh, God, uh, so many just come to mind. Uh, Juice World, uh, just a lot. Um, some of their songs are just, you know, just so powerful to me. Bedwetter, you know, Haze of Interference. Wow, that was a that was a tough one. Uh, so yeah, a lot of these artists and their songs have influenced me. Uh, there's so many out there to pick one is hard for me, but I'd say at least between six, six I'm about to say 60 to 90, you know, six to nine, really more like 60. Some of them are just incredible. Um, what's your name? Bruce Muffson. That's there at the end. Um, Josh K, uh, increase the estrogen, got you. Uh, Spirios, why am I racist? Okay, really simple. Um, we, we, generally, people that are racist is because of lack of awareness about other cultures and other people. Open yourself up. Expose yourself. Try, you know, try a food from a different culture. Go to an event like they're having some kind of like day of independence where uh, Ethiopian recognition day. Go walk around people. All the stupidity I got about that stuff growing up, I realized how dumb it was when I exposed myself to other people's lives and cultures. Try food. Try music. Try getting to know somebody from a different background. It opens up everything. Good luck with that. Let us know how that goes. Uh, Learn it somewhere. Hey, some cool music taste. Thank you. Um, I got to thank you guys, the fans, man. All the comments about try this group, try this group, try this group has really helped me, really evolved my music taste and how I see things. So thank you guys for all you share with me. Um, when a song is emotionally powerful, I get goosebumps, especially, yeah, it's a great one, Kendrick, man. Wow. And we had a guy that broke it down on a different level for me who had watched the site and liked what I had done and I was blown away at his insights. So credit to this guy. Um, Max Isakov, but this guy, you know, that's impressive. You know, when I see people kind of break things down and have different perspectives, yeah, it's great. And some of these artists are so raw. Isaiah Rashad, man, uh, that album that he put out, oh, God, blew me away, breaking things down. So the album cover was it for me. Um, incredible what these guys can do. Um, thank you for all that you do. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, but that's the point I'm just trying to make for people to understand is that it goes back to again being humble, being humble. Oh, we lost you here. What? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Doomer. My bad. Um, 
you know, if it's good for depression, here's my my only comment to you: look it up and go to a doctor. All right. I don't know. I know about. It. I don't know enough about it to be to be safe. I would definitely go talk to a pharmacist or talk to a psychiatrist and see are there any side effects, any issues. I know about it. I don't know enough about it. So that's what I would recommend you to do. Don't just take it because someone recommend it. Get a medical professional to give you some answers about it. Good luck. Hope that helps out. You hope that helps you. Um, Alan, I grew up with my dad being in hands with being in hands reach, but now I'm 17. I'm distant. Only see when I seek him. This is left a void in my chest. What do I do? Reach out to him. Call him. Never, never have a situation where your ties are broken. And you know, if you say, like, I haven't heard from this guy in a while, then reach out. I, I've had so many situations where people have said to me, you know, not about me or about a situation. I wish they would have called. I wish they would have stopped by. I don't know why we stopped talking to each other. You go do it. Even if it ends badly, guys, let's say you make several attempts, doesn't happen. At least you can say you made the effort. Don't go to your grave with coulda, woulda, shoulda. Go to your grave with I took care of it. I gave it my best shot. Didn't work out. That's it. Self-confidence. But always be the bigger person in those kind of situations. Reach out to others. People are so massively insecure about that. Um, Nick, can you cover the cake by Orange Rabbit? It's apparently unknown. Definitely, yeah. Talk to the person who said it was based on his grandpa's experience, and I just want to see if it's accurate or not. Do us a favor, Nick. Send us an email because otherwise, from the live stream, we lose the, we lose the comments. So send us an email. And I'll put it on our list to do. I'll check them out. I'm sure it's going to be great for us. But put in an email so I can follow up with it. Thank you. Um, it deals with PTSD. Forgot to mention that. No problem. Um, that's fine. But generally, shoot us the email because otherwise we're just not going to remember. And we, I don't have anything to write down. But, yeah, definitely send us an email, and we will get to it in the future. Not a problem. All right, guys. Um, any questions, fire away, fire away. Um, I've gotten to a total of uh, one one page tonight because a lot of questions come up about this topic, which I knew it would be. And again, um, I know you just make this into a training actually about accountability and self-confidence, but next week is going to be about fathers. I'm going to throw them in again, one last plug on the end of the month, the 31st, 5:30 West Coast time. It's going to be about fathers. Please sign up. It's ten dollars through PayPal. Okay. Um What's your email address? It's on our site, so you'll see it there. Just go down, Nick, and you'll find it. It's not a problem. And we'll get some Ridge of Nevada, and uh, we'll get it. Um, Josh K., I like your breakdown of a triple X, floor 555. His anger in music really speaks to me, I think, because of the way I grew up. Yeah, 100%. I mean, another one. I, you know, I've done so many breakdowns. But, yeah, he was another one. He just spit out the words. Triple X. Yeah, it was incredible. Uh, very, very angry. way he grew up, very, very difficult. And that's how he expressed And a lot of people related to that. And I think people thought, you know, who is this guy? Well, turned out to be very, 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 very powerful, powerful and very, very strong in how he related to his fans. A lot of people related to him. Why not? Makes sense. Um, uh, why am I always scared and jumpy? Is it from childhood? Uh, could be, you know, um, and oh, sorry, Nick, I got some, just wrote, wrote this down, sunridgeofnevada at gmail.com, sunridgeofnevada at gmail.com. Uh, again, check out that stuff from childhood. Go speak to somebody, see if this is a relatable issue, what's going on and going from there, but get yourself the help that you need. Not a problem. Makes sense. Uh, Blair, message. Okay, Bruce, you are the king. Th hey, Blair, you know what? Thank you. Appreciate you always commenting, always being invested. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank everybody, man. You know, we're not where we are without you guys and the girls. We appreciate it. You guys are the ones that have made us successful. Thank you, thank you. Um, I looked at the bottom. I can't find it. That's why I just said it to you. Sunridge of Nevada. Sunridge of Nevada at gmail.com. Okay. Where do you see mental health in uh, thanks, God? Okay. Where do you see mental health in 50 years? Man, that's a that's a that's a training in itself. 
I will tell you this because we're almost getting out of time. In 50 years, what we're doing now will be completely done. This will not be the way it's done. We're going to have artificial intelligence. We're going to have avatars. Uh, what you see now with the Alexa will be so much different. You'll have my voice in your ears, and you'll pay for it on a monthly subscription base. You'll have a picture of me be talking to you. It's going to change completely. How we dispense medications will change. We'll have um, probably inserts in our bodies to monitor our health every day, our mental health. Things will be linked up far more than they are now. There'll be so much more cross-pollinization between the courts, the jails, law enforcement, mental health, therapists. Everything will be on one network. But what we do now will be completely different in 50 years. That I totally accept. Um, Parax, are you familiar with uh, parasocial relationships? What are your thoughts on the subject of with the growing game of vulgars, virtual YouTubers? Um, that, Nick, you got it. Okay, good. You know what? I'm not that familiar with Paris. I know what it is. Um, if you could do me a favor, send us an email the way we just did for Nick, um, sunridgeofnevada at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you. I don't want to say what I don't know and sound like an idiot. So I've heard of it, but I don't know enough about it to be credible. So send me the information. I could look it up, and I can give you back my clinical, well, my mental health opinion. And we can go from there. I hope that helps. I'd like to hear from you about it. I always like to learn new things. Okay. Mental health of the clients, people become more isolated and values become less important. Um, good question. I don't know. I think people are reaching out. They want help. They don't want to be alone. They, they realize this isolation is not good. Um, I think people are going to want to be more in tune, more into relationships. And that's what we're trying to do with the channel as well. I don't want guys to be isolated. I want people to be together and kind of flake off each other. So if someone's kind of falling down, you pick them up like you don't leave anybody behind mentality. That's what we're ultimately looking for with the channel to grow. As people look out for each other, they respect each other, there's compassion for each other, there's accountability for each other, and there's self-confidence for each other. Like if you're hurting, let me help out. You need help with the job. Let me help out. You need help with moving. Let me help you out. What's this city like? Let me help you out. That's all people were looking for to how to grow the channel. Um, do, do, do. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, Spurious, sorry, bad enough. Uh, amen. You know what? Everyone's English, you know, say that. It's, it's great. But much better than my, than your language, which I'd flub. Um my friend is really racist, I think, insecure. Why? He also is very mentally disabled. There you go. When you don't have knowledge, you're living off media impressions, and it's not the answer. Take him out, turn off that social media, and show him the real world. You're doing him a world of favor. Good luck. Let us know how it goes. Do you do therapy on the phone? Uh, no, I don't. I'm not taking on any new patients. The way to reach us is the live streams, obviously. And the trainings. You can answer all your questions you want there. And uh, when I do a music breakdown. So no more individual therapy. I've kind of moved. I'm not kind of. I have moved away from that. And we're going to just steer you to the live streams, get a taste of this, and then really get a huge, uh, you know, entree when you do the training. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, we're, we're social animals. We've always been. Good point, And that's the way it's always going to be. All right, any last questions? Fire me because we're almost done out of time. Um, but I want people to feel, you know, great time. Oh, here we go. Uh, good, da, 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 da. good tool to use is Google Earth. Have you heard about it? Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, it's great. Really good. Everything, you know, and that's how I want you guys to think. Uh, how to be a good father for the future. Real quick, Josh, and I want you to get that training next week. Look at yourself, analyze yourself. What are your weaknesses and what do you got to do before a kid is going to pop in and change your life? But please, 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 if you can, get the training. It won't, you won't be disappointed. Okay, Nick, I feel like you're covering popular songs not only good to watch, but it grows your channel so more people watch live streams and then get professional help. Smart choice, Bruce. Nick, okay, you're smart. <laughs> yeah. That's it. This is the whole plan. Right. Very, very good. Very, very good, Nick. You got it. That's it. This is how you grow something. You appeal to people. 
You understand where they're coming from. You respond back to them. I would tell that to anyone who wants to grow a business. That's how you do it. Okay. Thank you, friend. Very wise. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Last You got last few seconds. Any last questions? Fire them in. But, yes, that's how you do things. You work with people. You accept them for who they are. You relate to them. You make yourself accessible. There you go. Accountability, self-confidence, hand in hand, hand in hand, hand in hand. Okay, guys, with that, we're going to call it a night. Uh, I think we got maybe – oh, Johnny Boy, okay. Johnny Boy, you're the last one. You think social media and electronics have a part of deteriorating mental health? 100%. 100%. Yes, only because it's become obsessive. Anything that's become obsessive that you can't get away from is not healthy. Moderation, moderation, moderation. All right, guys, and with that, Bruce Moffson, LCSW, Summer Ranger, Nevada. Thank you for tuning in. And don't forget, next week, one last time, 5.30, 31st, about fathers. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. Great video tonight. Appreciate it.